word perfect is defined as being without defect or blemish. My life was, in fact, perfect. I had the perfect home. I had the perfect wife, Charlene. Charlie for short. Hi, honey. Do you want to have sex before or after your leg of lamb? Perfect. I had the perfect job. Since I was five, it was my dream to be an officer of the Los Angeles Police Department. I rose quickly through the ranks, and it wasn't long before I was assigned to the department's elite vice squad. And that first day in the squad, well, if there had been a prouder man than me in that room, you would have been hard-pressed to point him out. Who can tell me what you say to a John when he pulls up to the curb? Garcia. About a date, handsome? Entrapment. Henderson. Nice car. Why, thanks. How's the ride? Exactly. Ride has two meanings, ladies. Henderson has expertly communicated his message to the John that his genitalia was Felice without entrapment. Henderson, hike up your skirt. We're going to bust some dirt. Santa Monica Boulevard. Yeah. And I can't forget my 12-year-old son, Atticus Finch Henderson. We named our only child Atticus after the character in To Kill a Mockingbird. We gave him such a name because it represented honor and decency and all things good. Come to Papa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Oh. All the molecules which made up my life were in glorious harmony. It was, as I mentioned, perfect. Perfect, that is, until that black Sunday when I got the call. <laughs> Yellow. In addition to being my wife, Charlie was an environmentalist, an active member of Greenpeace. On weekends, I had my football, and Charlie had her cutting her dolphins out of tuna nets. We had a strong bond. Neither one was jealous of each other's insignificant little hobby. Then the unthinkable happened. Charlie never resurfaced. They immediately started to search. Atticus and I were out of our minds with worry. By Monday night, there was still no word. It was as if Charlie had vanished off the face of the earth. And there was nothing I could do but wait. And I don't wait easy. Mr. Henderson, I'm afraid I have some bad news. We've called off the search for your wife. We did, however, recall 12,000 cans of chunk, light, tuna. I don't know if it was the Raiders losing or having the woman I loved being chopped up and packed in spring water, but I finally snapped. The following motion picture contains full frontal nudity and strong sexual content. <laughs> it was a beautiful service. I think Charlie would have liked it. Sorry, Charlie. I'm hungry. Life was no longer perfect. As a matter of fact, I slid into a horrible depression. For the next three months, all I did was punish myself by drinking, smoking, and watching anything with Alec Baldwin in it. And poor Atticus. He was so overcome with grief, he wouldn't eat. The memories were too painful for me to stay in California. So I sold the house. And I quit my job. Atticus and I headed east, where a headhunter had placed me with a new department, at the same pay. 
It was the dawn of a new beginning. The picture which had made up my life had been reframed. Everything looked different, even Atticus. Excited? I miss mommy too, Atticus. I miss her too. Mr. Henderson. I am. Or should I say Sheriff Henderson? Well, Jake Manhattan, you can call me mayor. Ooh, you look familiar. <laughs> well, you used to have that cop show. You're too kind. Well, what was the name? I really don't like to talk about myself. Truth and justice. Right, and you used to do that, uh... Use, use it or lose it, it dirtbag. So you're a truth and justice fan. Well, actually, I only saw it twice. Dad liked Kojak. Oh, how nice for Dad. I'm not staying here. I want to live with Grandma. I don't care if she lets her cat lick her eczema. Uh, Mayor Manhattan, Atticus is right. I mean, you know, where is the, the largest man-made lake in Arizona? Where's the, uh, the Jack Nicholas golf course? Where are the parks? Earthquake. Leveled the whole town. Mayor Manhattan, obviously you got me here under misleading pretense. You calling me a con man? Point of fact, I am. Good. Because I don't want some Nancy boy as my sheriff. I am not your sheriff. All right. Hey, sheriff Henderson, when we talked on the phone, you told me you wanted a whole new kind of life. You even signed a contract. Of course, where I come from, the contract's only as good as the paper it's written on. But you gave me $30,000 down payment on a house here in Manhattan. Now, you're, you're not in town two minutes. You're ready to call it quits. Before you pull up stakes, wouldn't you like to talk to some folks, see your home? I assure you, we're really quite neighborly. Well... Dad? It doesn't hurt to take a look. Now, the community of Manhattan butts up against this old Air Force base called Area 61. The Area 61? The People say the Air Force is having a UFO, Area 61. Nothing was ever proven. We want to misrepresent our community. Now, Manhattan is comprised of what we call gentleman ranches. 100-acre parcels of land where the owner is free to do as he sees fit. Stop! What? This is you. That's a pile of wood. And mortar. And it comes with instructions. How do you sleep at night? Eat a meal high and fat just before bedtime. Blood rushes to my stomach and I pass out. Get out. I spent your money. It's gone. <laughs> Trip to Nevada. Blackjack and hookers. Not that I need hookers. It's just they're cheaper in the long run. Get out. <sighs> it's 100 degrees out here. Think about it. Atticus, listen. Hear that? What? Shh, shh, shh. I think it's an eagle. It is very relaxing out here. Man can really hear himself think. Dad, 
Don't go Disney on me, okay? Disney? There's nothing satanic about the desert. What do you think your mom would do if she were here? Well, since she opted to die, she doesn't get to vote anymore. Atticus. She'd probably want us to give it a chance. Oh, my life sucks. And it did, for a while. Mine, too. Mayor Manhattan rented me one of his old TV show dressing rooms where Atticus and I lived during those early days in Manhattan. I was hopeful that once school started, Atticus's negative attitude about our new life would change. Hey, you be somebody today! Fight me! Sweet boy. Good morning, Sheriff. Morning. We're in the Gundersons. I'm Lon. I'm Lana. Right, you have the place down the road. Daniel Henderson. So, Lon and Lana? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that separates us is her beautiful A. Oh, for mercy's sake. Sex is all you think about, Lon. Well, you didn't complain this morning in the shower. Uh, nor last night in the hot tub. Oh, you're terrible. Folks, uh, there's something I can do for you. It's, uh, probably nothing. Right, please. Thanks. We call it home. I don't think I've ever been in a house entirely underground before. The walls and the ceilings are three feet solid cement reinforced by two feet of steel. This house could take a Scud missile and not so much as chip the paint. So you said there was a problem? Yes. There are a few things missing. Schultz! Clink! Where are their legs? That's what we'd like to know. Happened last night. Lana sewed them up. Yeah, I have a singer. They didn't yelp much. So what do you think uh, might have happened here? Oh, the government guys over at Area 61 there behind this... Well, I'll look into it. I thought you'd help. And what's going to happen to, uh, you know? Oh, well, we'll just pop a wheel in their hip sockets and they'll be fine. I had received a couple more calls similar in nature to that of the Gundersons. Household pets, right hind legs ripped from their bodies. Nobody had any idea what had actually happened, but they all had their suspicions. And all their suspicions lay behind the fence. Where are you? What the hell are you doing here, trespasser? I'm looking for someone who does unspeakable things to pets. Mexico's that way, pervert. You don't understand. I'm the sheriff of Manhattan, I'm Sheriff Henderson. Someone has been hurting some of the town people's pets. You know anything about it? What kind of person would hurt an animal? Oh, I don't know, maybe someone conducting illegal experiments? I hope you're not referring to the Air Force. My government. You ever see anything weird out here? There's this old couple who hump each other on the hood of their Humvee. It's weird and ugly. Are you out here on a regular basis? I guard the fence every night. But Sundays. Some Sundays I go to the Dew Drop Inn and grab a brew. So you're saying that uh, the Air Force could be conducting experiments Sunday nights? No dipwad. I'm saying I go into town on Sunday nights. My name's Jane. Oh, Daniel. Nice to meet you. Stand away from the gate. As I said, I am a little out of my element here. Um, any suggestions? No scientists over at Area 61 are doing one of their evil experiments. Yeah, you tell them, Lon. Those bastards in Washington think they can get away with anything. Let them have it, Lon. I was just over at the base, and they assured me that they had nothing to do with any of this. 
Well, then who the hell does? Exactly, huh? then who the hell does? Uh, hang on a minute now, handle this. Now, Sheriff, I appointed you, and I'd like to know what you intend to do about these animals who are terrorizing our... animals. I confess. I'm your man. Can you go back to L.A. now, Sheriff? Atticus. Oh, my. That smells. Hey. Right, who's got the beige dog? I think I was madder than I've ever been in my life. And anger is nothing more than a mask for fear. And I was scared. Scared that my own flesh and blood was capable of doing something so heinous, so vicious, so evil. Atticus. father of the year, but I can read my kid. I have to admit, I just didn't see it. You had no clue he was unhappy living here? Oh, he used to say he'd rather kill himself than stay here, but I thought he was just making conversation. Kids. Yep. What are you gonna do? Arrest him, I guess. Then reform school, and nine out of ten of them go to prison. Shucks. And I really wanted to meet him. Well, thanks for listening. I uh, better go. Well, I'm always here, except Sundays. I go into town, alone, drinking, alone, with no one else, no competition. Alone. <laughs> Son? We leaving yet? Son, you've got a coyote in your lap. I know. His name is Jack. What happened to Jack's eye? I don't know. Atticus, why can't you give our new life here a chance? Our new life? You mean your new life? You never asked me if I want to move to hell. Right? I have no friends, no fun. And no mom. Whatever. You're right. I didn't consult you, and I was wrong. And all I can ask for you to do is forgive me. Atticus, when your mom died, the hurt was so big inside of me that it pushed everything I was out. You remember I was lost. I didn't even put on a dress and drag myself to work. Your mom loved animals too, you know? Gave her life to prove it. I know. Is that where Jack buried the legs? How'd you know? Well, old Jack there can only see out of his left eye, which means all he's seeing is the right hind leg that and you could never hurt anything or anybody. That I do know. What's going to happen to Jack? I'm going to shoot him. I explained to the good people of Manhattan that the coyote, not my son, was responsible for the mutilations. I assured them to their satisfaction that justice would be carried out without hesitation.
The word different is defined as unlike in form, nature, or quality. As I looked out at this new strange land, this Manhattan, Arizona, I knew from here on out, for better or for worse, my life was, in fact, different. I'm Brian McNamara. Tonight in our very first episode of Manhattan AZ, we dealt with the maiming of, for the most part, innocent animals. I want to assure you that all animals portrayed came to us with their right hind leg missing. Whether it was a birth defect or they jumped in front of the family chainsaw, we don't know how these poor little creatures lost their right hind legs. We don't want to know. But we do know that none of us here at the show had anything to do with anything illegal. Not that we didn't have plenty of offers. Several owners of perfectly healthy pets let it be known to us that they would be willing to lose a right hind leg to get their pet into show business. But that's where we draw the line. Because intentionally cutting off any extremity for the sake of a joke just isn't funny. Sorry. We know because we work in television and we know better than you. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>